Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Sunday, but it's a special Sunday. Today is the Solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity, also known as Trinity Sunday. And today, <clears throat> many people explain this, that this is the celebration of a doctrine or a dogma, but actually not. It's, it's more than that. If it was a celebration of a doctrine or a dogma, we would try to emphasize understanding the Trinity. But we can't really explain it or understand it fully. We have to embrace it and affirm it as that which was revealed by God himself to us. And what we affirm today as a great mystery of the church and of all creation. And uh, on Trinity Sunday, for example, uh, as we look at this, the reading comes from the Great Commission at the end of Matthew's Gospel. And so again, it's not so much a matter of, of understanding a concept as recognizing a relationship with the three persons of the Godhead. I love this statement that's taken from uh, a Roman Catholic priest from the late 19th and early 20th century named Pius Parsh. He's from the Czech Republic. And this is what he writes. There is one God, and in this one God, there are three divine persons. The Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. Yet there are not three gods, but one eternal, incomprehensible God. The Father is not more God than the Son, neither is the Son more God than the Holy Spirit. The Father is the first divine person, the Son is the second divine person, begotten from the nature of the Father from eternity. The Holy Spirit is the third divine person, proceeding from the Father and the Son. No mortal can fully fathom this sublime truth. But I submit humbly and say, Lord, I believe, help my weak faith. I love that statement. It is clear, and, and yet at the same time we recognize the fact that this is an incomprehensible truth of an incomprehensible God, a God that is beyond anything that we could possibly understand. And in fact, I remember, I think it was Dr. C.E.M. Jode that said at one point that a God who is comprehended is no God at all. So that gives us great comfort on a day like Trinity Sunday. But also on Trinity Sunday, we take our reading from the Great Commission. It's from Matthew's Gospel. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, just prior to his ascension, Jesus does call his 11 disciples together, and there he gives them this great commission and basically gives them marching orders for what they are to do moving forward. And actually, the Great Commission then is passed on through the apostles to their successors and on to us in the church, century upon century upon century, that this is still the Great Commission for us today. And it's wonderful to, to kind of dig into this commission and to see what's really going on. And here, again, there is a command being given, and often people think that the command is go. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. And actually, the word go is not a command. It's a participle. In other words, uh, you could translate it this way, as you go. And there's only one command in this particular scripture, and the command is make disciples, make followers of all nations. And so as you go into the world, which is something that you will naturally do as my disciples, and especially for the 11, as my apostles, 
As you go into the world, I am commanding you to make followers, to bring people to the point where they will continue to follow me as you followed me. Well, how do you do that? More participles. In other words, uh, as you go, make disciples. Well, how do you make disciples? By baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. So again, bringing them into the point of discipleship is to bring them into a Trinitarian relationship with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And we can see throughout Jesus' teaching and we can see in the teachings of the church how that relationship through Jesus Christ is to the Father and sustained by the work of the Holy Spirit. All three persons involved in our life and we are in relationship with all three, being brought up into that love relationship that the three persons of the Godhead have with each other. And then he says, okay, baptizing them. And then he says, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. And he's with them through the power of the Holy Spirit. But you, you bring people to a point of discipleship first by baptizing and then by teaching. And in Scripture, the word teaching often means to whittle to a fine point. In other words, it's not to take them to a class that they learn information, but rather that through their learning of knowledge that their life is transformed. So it's more than just information, it's transformation. And that begins with baptism. So a way that you could look at this particular scripture, you could say, as you go, as you baptize, as you teach, make disciples. That is the goal. And Luke 640 is a beautiful passage to help us to understand discipleship. Because here Jesus tells his followers, a disciple, when he is fully taught, will be like his teacher. Disciples in those days, when they were following after a rabbi, was more than just learning what the rabbi knew, but making their lives like the rabbi's life. And so here again, as we're making disciples, we're wanting to bring people to a point through introducing them into the Godhead through the sacrament, the grace-bestowing uh, sacrament of baptism where we are incorporated into the church and, in, and by grace into Christ himself and into a, a relationship with the Godhead, that as we baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we then follow that up with formation, that we teach them not just giving them information, but giving them teachings that they can observe. So it's observation. And as they do that, it's bringing the fullness of all that Jesus revealed to the disciples, all that he revealed to the twelve and his teachings of them, which is the continuing work of the church today. So what a, what a powerful day. Trinity Sunday. It's more than just about a doctrine or a dogma. It is about a relationship, a relationship with the one most holy trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, again, it's great to be with you on this wonderful Sunday. And the Lord willing, we will be together tomorrow for another installment of Day by Day. So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.